Okay, everyone, hello. I'm going to go over the Lock Hansen classification, which is a very high yield classification in podiatry. You're going to have to know this one, but it's kind of difficult, so you're going to have to watch this video over and over um, and practice on your own a lot, okay? So, the first step that you need to do is memorize this. In order, sad, sir, pab, per, or alternatively, some people memorize sad, sex, abs, and pecs, a bit more memorable, but it's up to you. Just mem remember them in order. Uh, SAD stands for supination adduction. Uh, you can say sad, uh, some people might prefer you to say SAD, but do not say sir, pab, or per, you need to say S-E-R, P-A-B, or P-E-R. S-E-R stands for supination external rotation, that is supination of the foot and external rotation of the leg, okay? Pronation abduction is pronation of the foot with abduction, of course, and PER is pronation with external rotation, okay? These are the mechanisms that cause the ankle injuries. There's different patterns for each, and you'll see below that you have to uh, know every step of them, okay? So step one is remember, memorizing that. Step two is mem uh, memorizing the association with the Weber classification. The Weber classification is a separate classification, but it's a bit easier. It's just the level at which the fibular fracture occurs. A is below the ankle syndesmosis. Uh, B is at the level of the ankle syndesmosis. And C is above the level of the ankle syndesmosis. So memorize sad sir, pab per. Memorize they're each associated with A, B, and C in order. That's why I have them this way. Okay, so the first step is supination abduction or SAD. So you have to memorize that SAD is a two-step process, okay? So uh, if you just, uh, let's just do this logically and common sense, okay? So if you can move your foot in supination and adduction, you can, you can feel that there's tension on the lateral side of your ankle, which is going to be the first step and it's going to cause either one, a uh, rupture of the lateral ankle ligaments or a uh, transverse fibular fracture below the level of ankle syndesmosis, which is Weber A, okay? It can be either or. Now, so another common sense thing to remember is that if it's an avulsion fracture, the, the ligament will avulse in a transverse fracture pattern, okay? If it's more of a rotational force, it will be a spiral or oblique fracture, okay? And step two is if this injury continues, the talus will hit the medial mal, causing a fracture or a force to go up and out the medial malleolus in a vertical or vertical oblique fracture pattern, okay? This is the only ankle injury pattern that has a vertical medial malfracture. If you see this on x-ray, it's pathognomonic, you're done. Okay, SAD2. All right, let's move on to SER. Now, SER is the most common type of ankle injury mechanism. Um, if you don't know which one you're looking at, you're not very good. Your safest bet is to guess SER because I think something like 70% of injuries are SERs. Okay, but you do have to remember that this is a four-step process. So SAD was two, SER is four. Now, if you can imagine uh, this mechanism, look at your foot, put it in supination, and begin to externally rotate your leg, you can tell that this is kind of an inversion type injury. And what happens with inversion type injuries, we know, is the most common rupture is the ATFL, the weakest ankle ligament, okay? So step one is rupture of the ATFL. It can also have a avulsion fracture of the tibia or the fibula, okay? These have... Uh, Eponyms, the tibial avulsion fracture is called the tilo chapeau. T for tibia, tilo chapeau. That's how you remember that. Now, the fibula will have an avulsion fracture called Wagstaff. I don't have a mnemonic for that. Just remember that the T one is tilo chapeau, the other one is Wagner for the fibula, okay? Now, step two is the fibula. So, if you can imagine you're externally rotating, you break through the ATFL, the force continues up and out through the fibula. Now, this is a spiral oblique fracture at the level of the ankle syndesmosis, Weber B, okay? Remember, remember that. Now, more uniquely, this one has, is said to have a posterior spike. So I have these dotted lines here to indicate that they're happening on the back of the ankle. 
So on the lateral view, you can see a posterior spike of the fibula, okay? Step three, the forces continue to rotate around the ankle in a circular motion to the posterior malleolus of the tibia. This is an eponym uh, you need to know called Volkmann fracture. The Volkmann fracture, um, sometimes you can see it on the AP with something called the double contour sign. Um, it's sort of a shadow that kind of looks like the dotted line I have here. Um, personally, it's kind of hard for me to find it, but on the lateral view, you will see a posterior uh, mal fracture. And finally is four. Four is a transverse fracture of the medial malleolus or rupture of the deltoid ligament, either or, okay? Now, um, something you need to know is that sometimes they will say it's a bimal or trimal equivalent. Now, an equivalent is essentially um, the fracture didn't happen, but a, a, you can assume a ligament ruptured because you cannot see ligaments on x-ray. So you say, if you see all the signs that, a, uh, so for instance, an SCR4 occurred, but you don't see the medial malfracture, you can assume the deltoid ligament is out, and that is called a bimal or two malleoli fractured, okay? Bimal equivalent. Now, let's move on to pronation abduction, PAB. Now, PAB is a three-step process, okay? So we have two, four, and now three. So put your foot into pronation and begin to abduct. What? is the initial stretch or force that happens. It's the medial mal. So you get a rupture of the deltoid ligament or a avulsion fracture of the medial malleolus. And as I said, avulsion fractures cause transverse fractures patterns, okay? So that's step one. Step two is the forces continue through the circle. They begin to uh, rupture the ATFL um, and uh, so that can also have the Teloshipu or Wagstaff fractures seen here. It's the same thing. Uh, the PTFL can also be involved. And step three is a similar oblique fracture of the fibula at the level of the ankle syndesmosis. That's our Weber B again. Okay, so if you see an x-ray and it has a s oblique fracture of the, uh, the, the fibula at the level of ankle syndesmosis, there are two types that it could be. You have to differentiate them and it's kind of difficult. I won't get into the details here, but you need to practice that, okay? The final one, pronation external rotation. This is another four-step process. So SAD is two, SIR is four, PAB is uh, three, and PER is four, okay? So put your foot into pronation and externally rotate it the stretch initiates at the medial mal. Okay, that's easy, uh, same as the last one. So we can get a rupture of the deltoid ligament or an avulsion fracture, which is a transverse pattern at the medial mal. The force continues through to the ATFL, can similarly cause a Teloshipu at the tibia or a wagstaff of the fibula. The force continues, now this is uh, very unique, you need to know this, so as the force continues, it can cause a Weber C. This is very unique. It's the only one that has a Weber C, um, arguably, and it ruptures through, the forces go through the syndesmosis up and out through the fibula. Now, this can be at any level above the level of the ankle syndesmosis, so it can be even higher up You can't on the image you can't even see. So sometimes they'll try to trick you. You have to ask for a high tip fib view to rule out a high fibular fracture, and that's important because if you rupture the ankle syndesmosis, What's holding the talus under the ankle? Uh, nothing, really. It can just go right out. So you have to fix these. This is, well, arguably, this is one of the indications that they talk about, okay? So you need to know that this is called the Masonu fracture. Masonu fracture is something you need to know, and you need to know that you need to repair the ankle syndesmosis to restore the ankle stability. Step four is similarly a posterior mal fracture. Um, Volkmann fracture is the eponym for that one, okay? So, you're going to get uh, an image in practice, and the first step is easy to look at the wag step, the, I'm sorry, the Weber classification. So you look at the, the level of the fracture on the ankle. Is it a Weber A, B, or C? If it's a Weber A, that's easy. It's an SAD. You just need to know, is it a 1 or a 2? If it's a C, that's easy. You just need to know 1, 2, 3, or 4. Just memorize the, the numbers uh, and the rotational for, uh, directions. If it's a Weber B, that's a little more difficult. You have to uh, decide if it's an SCR or PAB. SCR is the most common, okay? But you need to, some PABs do happen, and you need to know 
uh, what they look like. There are um, different details you can go into there of how to roll them in or out. Um, but yeah, essentially this is a difficult classification system. Watch this video over and over again and practice with images on Google, angle fracture images, and um, eventually it becomes second nature. Thanks.